Hey guys, today we are going to talk about eight cards that have gone up in price and explain why they have gone up and look at other cards that may go up in the future. So we have Bad River, which is from Miraz. It's not on the reserve list and it's not even a rare. This type of land has great appeal because it substitutes as a pseudo fetch land and even if you do are playing the fetch lands, you can always play this as an additional land. Very good card in ED8s. I don't see its price dropping ever, barring a reprint. The card came from 50 cents to $2, and it just has trended up the entire time. It's not seeing any play. There's no reason you would play this in lieu of a fetch land. A fetch land gives you all the advantages of not coming into play tapped for the and then when you tap it you can sacrifice a life which is okay bad river however will serve as fetch land number two and that's never a bad thing to have duplicates of certain lands in your deck or duplicate skills so good card continues to go up another card that has done very well recently is from magic origins magic origins as a set isn't a great set. Uh, it doesn't have that many valuable cards and now the MTG Frontier. No matter what you believe MTG Frontier was, I believe it was a way for stores to increase hype and drive sales and sell product that normally wouldn't sell. And they did it well. However, like it depends on your regional, right? It's your location. If your location got really into Tiny Leaders or Frontier and they, they just wanted to play that, then yeah, it made sense as a format to you in your region. So this card is the Archives. It is a $6.50 card. Anytime you can double, anytime you see the word twice, anytime you see the word Legendary Artifact, worth looking into because that is the type of card that will retain value, that will have a good price, and overall just it is what it is. Certain cards will go up in price, and certain cards will never be under $5. And this is one of them, barring a reprint. So lo love the card for EDH, another card that has been doing very well. We took a look at its reprinted version, but now we're going to look at the original version. Wow. $42. This card crashed incredibly hard. This card, if you can believe it, at one time was a $70 non-foil. After the reprint, you could see the tank and then never really recover it. It continued to tank down even after it rotated out. And it's one of the best cards in standard. It's the best, sorry, one of the best cards in modern. I remember it being in standard mono black decks. They were good enough as already, but to have this card in addition to it. But it is one of the best cards in modern right now. It has so much power, so much choice, so little cost for the ability to take your opponent's best card or most key card from their hand and make them draw it again. I like it. The foil copy is $600. And that is outrageous to me. So I can understand a 10 multiplier, $420. That's even tough to get to. But do you have a 15 multiplier almost? That is unheard of for a f card so expensive to begin with. Talking about foil multipliers, Stronghold Gambit is a $7, let's call it $6.72 card, and the foil is $45. When these old foils spike, they spike like none other just because there is almost no supply and if there's even a tiny bit of demand, yes, they are going to dry up so fast. This card was literally bulk. As you can see from the graph, it was probably 15 cents, maybe 10 cents, and now it is $6. Even up until, looks like A for Revolt. Up until A for Revolt, you could have got this card for under a dollar. No longer. So the MTG spiky market is still well and good. It will never die. It just never goes away because people find new combinations, people find new decks, people find new cards they love. And that's why there is actually for many of these cards, true demand. Now, not every one of them. And 
we will see the test of time. So Sinbad. All right, let's talk about Sinbad. This card went from less than a dollar, it looked like 50 cents. You can't even make out what it was in the graph because the graph is what how it is. Now it is $40.22. Fascinating, right? It is fascinating. If you can get your hands on Arabian Nights, you need to get your hands on Arabian Nights. I feel like the market is being manipulated, but at the same time, it will never be what it used to be. This card is never going to be a dollar again. The other card that I'm going to talk about, I've talked about in great detail, but it has never, it it keeps going up, and that would be Spirit Link. But Sinbad, minor card. I remember one of the decks, uh, we one of the games we used to play in middle school was to make bad rares as a deck, and Sinbad was part of the deck I was playing with, so you would make the worst deck possible and you would give it to your opponent, and then your opponent would make the worst deck possible and give it to you, and then you would see who would win. And Sinbad was in his deck, and I was like, oh, well, this is not too bad. It's not great, but not too bad. So the next card is a common from Legends, Spirit Link. The $13.5 card now from literally no money. It, it is surprising, it is scary, and it is something where if you can find both Craigslist, like, here's what's interesting. I don't think the people on Craigslist really know that the price spike is going on because the price spike is going on for bulk. And when you talk about bulk, no one really looks at their bulk beyond maybe the first few days. And the bulk kind of sits there. And then you hear about it and you learn a little bit more about it. But something like Spirit Link is the definition of bulk. If that person played during Legends or played during that era or even played during a, let's say, um, Zendikar, original Zendikar, they're not going to realize this card is what it is. And now is there a market for it? Is there a demand for it? If you sell it to someone for 25%, so if you sell this to someone for $2.50, let's, let's call it $4.00. I would buy all these day, all day long for four dollars because at the retail of thirteen, you're not going to lose on that this type of card, and just holding it is probably fine. Next, uh, another card that has gone up a ton: Glacier Chasm. Lands are super unique. Lands with unique abilities like Hall Mist, like they seem crappy now, but eventually they're not, they're going to be valuable. I cannot tell you why, I cannot tell you how, or I just know that they will be. And one thing I've learned is bulk lands in particular are really good to get into, like Bad River and then Glacier Chasm. These are just fantastic lands to get into because when you buy them in bulk, you get dozens, if not 50 of them. Because a store is going to open what they, and sell what they can in singles, no one is ever going to want to buy this card during the Ice Age. No one wanted to buy this card until recently. I still don't know if the buyers are real. We will find out soon enough. But this is not one of the things that people would look at. It is one of the things that is the definition of bulk. You can't go more bulky than Glacier Chasm and during Ice Age. No one wanted this card. There are dozens, if not hundreds of copies out there in bulk right now on Craigslist. It's an interesting time to buy bulk. If I didn't fear for my life from buying from Craigslist, from like, you know, kidneys, I, I, we have one liver and I would like to keep that, but I think we have two kidneys and we can survive out without a second kidney. So I'd like to keep both my kidneys. All right. This card is amazing. Manor Echoes. Really incredible. It's a $30 card. It went from, as you can see from the graph, a buck to $30. <laughs> This stuff never happens. This is the dream speculation because you had plenty of time to accumulate this. If you started buying during RTR and then you bought during until it looks like Born of the Gods and then you continue to buy, at no point did you lose money. This is would have been the fantastic, this would have been a once in a lifetime speculation if you made it. 
So let me know if you end up, and again, this is the definition of bulk. You might be able to find a $30 card in a bulk bin because it was bulk until just recently. And that's what I love about MTG Finance. I don't like the community very much, but I do like MTG Finance as an issue because you never know what's going to go up. But when it does go up, you can look for similar cards. And that's interesting to me because Mana Echoes is not the only card that does something like that. And every other card that is similar is still very, very underpriced if you believe this is a $30 card, which I don't, but I do believe it's 10. I believe it's 15. I don't think it's going to be below 10. And for a $1 card to go to 10 as the bottom level, that's the worst case scenario. That's, uh, that's fantastic. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.